What's our next question? Yes, here. <laughs> what do we got? Anybody? Here. Is, is this working? Yes. Uh, here. Take it away. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> no apologies. No apologies. No. It's great um, to see you. Yes, thank you. Um, and my question, um, I, I work very deep with uh, clients, and I am... Um, uh, in a way, I'm seduced by your dharma to work with clients for, for more than five years, and it develops very, very, uh, in, in all new directions. I'm very grateful. Uh, and there's a, a type of client that I have in my, in my space um, that are mostly young, guy, young men um, in their 30s, 40s, and they uh, have a kind of porno addiction, and they... Uh, really a uh, lack uh, pure arousal mm. and they they can only be aroused by uh, in a way their imprint in their brain is fully on the screen and if I work with this type of clients it's um, I am searching all my uh, ways to <laughs> to break through at some point I I, I do like uh, you get at least some arousal from the pornography so that's at, we have to honor that, and I make a whole transition in their minds uh, that they honor the woman or the man, what they are looking for, um, right. uh, to, to, to see the goddess or the god, in, right. in that they are right. at least aroused, and right. that they don't we feel guilty, that, and right. that's the product of your dharma. I, I want to be, f I'm very grateful for, but it's, f it's so difficult to work. Um, on this imprint on the brain, and it's a whole generation. It, I get only the top of the iceberg in my room. Uh, I know this is a cultural uh, huge thing, mm -hmm. that, that men have no power in their pelvic uh, zone because they, are, they have their arousal from the screen. And, and I, 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 I'm looking for better ways how to... Uh, so t t tot totally with you, beloved. So just, just, and I mean this in like the, with like quivering tenor. So I just want to make sure, so I can want to make sure to, to honor your inquiry. And so the question is, so just give me where, where, tell me where I should go. Just help me out here. The question the is, quest how do we address this? The question is, no. The question is, at some point, if the imprint is on the brain to get aroused by visuals, mm -hmm. how do I guide? Uh, this to okay. an other direction. I, okay, I tried beautiful. it in okay. many ways, but okay. I did not find an easy one. <laughs> right, there's no easy one. There's no beautiful. easy one, I know. Okay, right, no, but beautiful. Okay, so now I, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't go right. Okay, mm. got it. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Henrietta raises just an, an incredibly important issue, you know, which is that I, I, won't, I won't say his name. He's a beautiful young man who I worked with for a bunch of years, who said to me that, you know, when he was 11, he first kind of accessed the wired world, kind of the high-speed internet. You know, and by the time he was 14, he had seen more images of more kinds of sexuality right, than any other generation in history. He, he was ahead of the most lavish Turkish sultan, right? In other words, here, right? Now, the most lavish Turkish sultan hadn't even barely managed to access, or was he able to access by age 14? I mean, it's a, and, and so the, the issue of, which you raise so gently and tenderly and beautifully, and your work is so important, right, the issue of kind of the pornographic, not as a, not as a moralistic issue, right? Do you get what I'm saying? It's not a moralistic issue, right? It's not a, right? That's not the issue at all. Right? And I, I actually, in, my, in my, my early years, right, wrote and talked a lot about, you know, against the kind of moralistic attack on pornography. But as the years went on, I shifted my position already for the last 15, 20 years. When I realized just, the, and, and I just started talking to person after person, and, and the devastation of just the impact on, right, the quality and possibility of arousal. 
right? And, and arousal is a first principle and first value of cosmos. We have a right to be aroused. Isn't that beautiful? We have a right to be aroused. And when, I, when I'm in arousal, all the questions about the meaning of life fall away. Like, it's good. no, 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 I'm actually, no, life is intrinsically good and true, right, and beautiful and stunning. And I'm actually experiencing the arousal of cosmos alive and awake in me. So arousal is a quality of cosmos. Much longer conversation. And we've talked about this week about seducing yourself to take responsibility for your own arousal. So in, in essence, what Henriette is asking is, is there a possibility which is genuine of being aroused by love? Like, could I be aroused by love? Right? That's a great question. And I think the answer is, is a definite yes. Right? I think that actually there's a genuine door in to being aroused by love. And we haven't had a, a serious conversation on, on sexing, on sexuality, on fuck, really here, right? We, we've danced around it, but since 2017, right? That was the last time we did a serious, you know, deep dive, right, into, into this, you know, incredibly important issue when we did, and Nate was here, remember, that, that summer, right? That was, a, it was an important summer. But, but the notion that actually I can be aroused by love actually changes the source code of the cosmos, Right? And here's the crazy thing. The crazy thing is that classical arousal through visual images very quickly tapers off. Right? It, doesn't, it doesn't last. So the question is how to teach people to be aroused by love. Is that a fair question? Y yes, and, but it, it's, I, already, no, I already examined in a way that the brain is, uh, in a way, so what you have to do is it's, it's no 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 I no I get I get I get it and there's an enormous amount of information which actually compares the brain of porn addiction to heroin addiction right the brain actually gets right but you can rewire the brain right? just like you can rewire the brain after addiction you can actually rewire the brain now by addiction I want to be really careful right? I don't be really careful addiction is such a a messy word. Right? And there's a whole debate around addiction, pornography. I don't want to use the word addiction. Right? Because in a certain sense, we should be addicted to eros. Yeah. We should want eros all the time. We should, we should want desire all the time. Right? That should be a, that's a healthy addiction. Right? It's a healthy, right? right? I want to be, but, but actually, to actually have my arousal pattern hijacked in a way where I can't actually find my way and I can't actually mix love in, right, is, is, is a huge issue. So I want to just throw one thing into the space, and it's just, just, to, just a, and we actually, again, I, we have got now our third possible topic for a week, but we actually have to go back, and we have to get back to this, right? And we've, we've danced around it the last three, four years, and we've spent, right, right, the last four years on a, right, on a phenomenology of Eros, which is really about this, but let me just, just throw one thing just into the mix just as uh, with permission, right, Henrietta? So there's a beautiful text in the 16th century which is called Yerida Tzorach Aliyah, which means descent for the sake of ascent. It's very beautiful. So descent is actually quite a beautiful path. Animality is a beautiful path. Because our animality is actually awake and alive in us as conscious, awake, gorgeous human beings. So be able to consciously access my animality and engage in descent, whatever descent means for you, but not descent as in going down, but actually entering into the depth of ecstatic animality, but stay with me for a second, yurida, descent. But then, right, as you kind of as you let that actually fully engulf you, right, then before you come to the place of explosion, ascend, find your partner's eyes, and explode in love. So instead of bypassing the descent, 
I do dissent for the sake of assent. Now what we need is, in pornography, we need a pornography 2.0. Pornography is about public sexing that's available. Right? We can't legislate and create a kind of repressive puritanism, and yet we can't have an internet wired with kind of a kind of pornography that's actually devastating. And you quite, don't quite know what to do. My son is exactly that age, and I'm not exactly sure what to do with his internet. Right? How do I write? And as, how do I write? And as, it's, it's not a moralistic issue. It's not like, oh, well, I don't want him to see a breast. That's not the issue. I don't want him to spend ages 11 and 12 to 15 being inundated with images of arousal so that when he's 18 and 19 and, and he's ready for his first love, he can't actually see her. And that's devastating. That's tragic, right? And so we actually need to actually create w what we might call, and we've called KK, right, a porn 2.0. So, for example, let's give you a wild example. Walk into the temple in Jerusalem, right of the lost ark. We've talked about it here many times. And there are two cherubs making love above the ark. That's public arousal. It's actually, at the center of the temple in Jerusalem was actually a vision of public arousal. That's shocking. And the pilgrimage, you know the word in English, pilgrimage, the pilgrimage was to go see that public arousal. Right? So, so Henrietta is working in this field. And of course, it's not, it's not a full answer. It's, a, it's just, a, we're just, we're just, we're, we're in it together. But we actually have to have a path to retrain the brain, which is where you started. Right? And we can retrain the brain. And we retrain the brain by actually right, repeating again and again and again right, a different way of accessing. Right? And the truth is that there's a purity to fuck. Right? There's a goodness to fuck. But we don't have a narrative that allows us to access it. We don't even associate the word purity with fuck. There's some, no, purity? Fuck. What, what do those even have to do with each other? But unless we can act, and that's what we were talking about this week, this new story of desire rooted in the sciences, when I actually, the interior and exterior, where I actually get the purity of fuck, right? The goodness of fuck, right? And, and I actually can actually feel that, and I actually have a lived experience of it, so that actually, that wires my brain. And I don't engage pornography on a moralistic ground, Yawn, oh. boring, right. uninteresting, and dumb, right? Right? Is God really going to zap you for accessing that site? Well, I'll pass on that, God. But you're going to actually fry your brain and your arousal pattern and your eros, right, and your love. Right? So, so we actually need to recreate a new sexual cosmos and the internet is the nervous system of the planet. And the nervous system of the planet is wired by bad pornography. Right, so how do we new, move from pornography to erotica? How do we actually create spaces of public arousal that are gorgeous? That is a huge question. And one that we've, we've spent a lot of time on we need to come back to. And, and again, I just want to, last sentence, just to honor you because you're doing such important work. And, and we're in your debt, and we need, we need much, much, much more heroic and beautiful right, and sacred work right, in this area. So thank you. Right, thank you, thank you, thank you. And that definitely calls for a drink. Right, L'chaim. L'chaim, but you got to raise, raise it up. Let's raise it up. Let's raise it up. L'chaim, 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 L'chaim.